Inflammation is the body's response to injury, and for inflammation to occur, there are specific pathways of various molecules involved, which are called inflammatory mediators. These are which cause the effects of inflammation. We're going to talk about the inflammatory mediators later on in the video, but let's talk about what inflammation actually is. So inflammation can be caused by one of the following reasons. It can be due to bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites. It can be due to physical or chemical injury, and this can either be with trauma or sunburn. It can be due to tissue necrosis, which can happen via trauma or ischemia, which results in the release of cell contents and causes inflammation. Or it could be due to varying types of hypersensitivity. There are five typical signs of inflammation. We have loss of function, and this is due to the fact that movement of the inflamed area can result in pain, and presence of swelling may physically limit movement. We have heat, and this is due to increased blood flow to the area, and that's due to dilation of blood vessels. We have a swelling, which is because of fluid accumulation in the extravascular area, which is part of the inflammatory process. We have redness, due to increased dilation of blood vessels in the injured area, and the increased blood flow results in a red appearance. And we have pain, and that's largely due to the activation of the inflammatory mediators such as bradykinins and histamine, which stimulate nerve endings. In general, when a location of the body is inflamed, it's given a specific name. This is usually the name of the area, followed by the ending itis. For example, appendicitis is inflammation of the appendix, periodontitis is inflammation of the periodontium, and tonsillitis is inflammation of the tonsils. Let's talk about how inflammation starts. In tissues, there are immune cells which are ready to react and start an inflammatory response. Examples of these immune cells are mast cells, macrophages, histamines, Kupfer cells and histiocytes. These immune cells have receptors on the surfaces. In general, they are known as pattern recognition receptors, PRR, and there are two types called DAMP and PAMP. And that stands for damage associated molecular patterns and pathogen associated molecular patterns. The immune cells are activated via their pattern recognition receptor according to whether there is a presence of a pathogen, like an antigen, or if there is cell damage. Once the immune cells are activated, they release inflammatory mediators. We then have the effects we mentioned above, and to go over them again, they are loss of function, swelling, pain, heat, and redness. Another thing that happens, which is due to the increased permeability to the site of inflammation, is the movement of white blood cells to the location of inflammation, and that's to aid fighting off any pathogens. Inflammation is a necessary pathway when dealing with injured areas of the body, and that's because the increased fluid to the area dilutes toxins, the increased membrane permeability in the area allows entry of antibodies and white blood cells to the area, the overall effect is an increased immune response by influx of white blood cells to the area and increased delivery of nutrients and oxygen to the affected site. The negative consequences of inflammation The swelling may inhibit movement and function. The surrounding healthy tissues may get damaged depending on the extent of the inflammation. Inflammation may be occurring when it doesn't need to be in cases of allergies and there is a persistent cytokine release. The most common inflammatory mediators are listed here. The specific functions are also listed here, and some of these include increasing vascular permeability, and that's done by inflammatory mediators like histamine, serotonin, and bradykinin. Some of them are responsible for smooth muscle contraction, like C3A and C5A. Chemotaxis is another function, and this is the chemical stimulus which attracts white blood cells to the inflammation site. And various inflammatory mediators are responsible for this, including interleukin-8, N4-mile peptide, and collagen fragments. Anyway, just have a look through this table and just get familiar with some of these inflammatory mediators. Some of them you might have already heard before. You don't need to learn all of them by heart, but just understand that they are markers of inflammation, and remember these functions here on this side as they are critical in how the body deals with inflammation.